Hey everyone, Yomi here. So, this is going to be the first of likely most of the characters on all of them guides. So, a quick overview of Cagliostro. She is a versatile mid range character who can provide good team support with her unique buff and a good amount of damage through her use of her low cooldown skills into her charged attacks. She, as a whole, is pretty straightforward as she doesn't have anything overly complex in her kit and her game plan is just pretty simple. So to start out her N1 into finisher is a long range ability. If you tap the finisher twice, there's a second hit and the second hit launches. And the range of the second hit is much longer than the first, so it can reach all the way from over here. Very good for hitting faraway targets or if enemies are in a line. Just overall solid. Her N2 into finishers is simply just an AoE around her. This is very good when enemies are surrounding you, usually with a ton of abs and so on and so forth. Her N3 into finishers is just a bunch of hits from chainsaws. They obviously all apply supplemental and should proc on hit effects. These are very good if you just want to rack up the hits. Her N4 into finishers are just her strongest damaging hits in terms of singular hits. As they just each hit with each of the hammers, so two and then three hits, so for a total of five hits. Kai has the unique charge mechanic, so she could charge up to one, two, or three levels of collapse, and this charge time is sped up by doing combo finishers. So if I end one finisher, you can do a charge immediately after. However, you can also charge very quickly, so I'm at charge three already. So you could just do something like this and launch the charge. Very good. This also works after skills. Certain skills, they do list them prop they do list the properties, but yeah. For her build, as with every other character, the best weapon currently in the game is the terminus weapon. This thing is very strong. It has Catastrophe, which is easily the most broken buff we currently have, and it's only able to be obtained on Terminus weapons. Catastrophe just essentially gives you a bunch of attack, 50% extra, and 100% extra damage cap as long as you are below the 45,000 maximum HP threshold. It's very strong, very easy to achieve, very good source of attack up as well as cap up. The weapon also comes with damage cap, it comes with regen and a unique skill called Sigil Booster, which gives one level to each sigil you have equipped. Very good. It's everyone's best weapon. It's best in slot. Always get it. First non-negotiable skill you're going to be wanting to use is War Elemental. If you have it, it's a Curio drop. It's hard to get. However, it makes sure that you are always advantageous Ellie against enemies, which in this game gives you an extra 20% damage bonus flat after all of the calculations and it is literally free 20 percent damage if you have it always take it the next most important is obviously damage cap as you may know with four damage caps plus a terminus weapon you will be capped at 65. the only reason i have 69 is because of sigil booster boosting each sigil individually for another extra four points leaving me at 69. nice and yeah this is your greatest source of cap up is these four slots Unfortunately, maybe if we get bigger sigils later on, like sixes, that we can limit these slots down a bit. But for now, these five slots, four elemental and four damage caps, are mandatory. The next slot I personally like to use on pretty much every character is Tyranny, because Tyranny lowers your max HP and gives you a good percentage of attack boost. 
and you compare this with Aegis, which I tend to get on a substat, like one of my damage caps has it, and it gives you a little bit extra HP. So I find that this helps me stay over 40,000 HP, which is usually where you tend to get one shot if you're below in current endgame content. So staying at like 41k or up due to Tyranny plus Aegis combo is very good. If you personally are fine with playing with less HP, then go ahead and replace Aegis with anything you want, as long as you're below 45,000 to proc catastrophe. Stamina is another very strong modifier because in this game you are more or less either at 100% HP or you are dead. Of course, this is different for certain other characters or if you're running an alternative build like with Enmity and so on, but for most general play and general farming, it Stamina is just a very, very strong skill that pretty much every character can make great use of. There's nothing wrong with running even two of these in case you didn't want to run Tyranny. Quick Charge is something that characters who have charge abilities definitely like to have. Personally, I don't think that two sigil slots of Quick Charge is really needed, as one slot is very efficient. One slot Assuming you have Sigil Booster, puts you at level 16, which gives you a 21.6 charge time reduction on your charge skills, which is very strong. If you were to commit a second quick charge, that goes up to minus 30% charge time, which is also strong, but it's only a 9.4% gain for a second slot. Of course, it also gives a little bit extra attack, but me personally, I find that one slot is very efficient. If you are more comfortable with two, of course run two, that is up to you. Me personally, I like one, especially if you can get it with um, Steady Focus. Very very good for charge characters because as you can see it boosts your defense and you can't even get interrupted by foes while charging attacks because you have Stout Heart. Very strong combination, especially if you can get it on one sigil. Very efficient slot. I only run one. So the next skill that I think is pretty mandatory, even at one slot, I like three for the consistency, but of course you can always remove two, is supplementary damage. This, much like War Elemental, gives you an extra 20% damage. However, unlike War Elemental, this one does it as an extra added hit on top of your normal hits, which also allows it to play well with things like Drain or Cascade, as it also procs on hit effects. So it is a very strong 20% damage boost effectively, but it also has synergies with things like Cascade. So very strong, especially for characters that can abuse Cascade, like Cagliostro, Eid, or any character that just like wants to use a lot of skills or has a lot of hits that would allow them to proc a lot of supplemental damage hits. You can choose to run only one. Me personally, I like the consistency of three, like I said. But one, I think, is a very effective slot. 40% chance to do it, still better than zero. So if, for whatever reason, you don't have three, then, of course, go ahead and run one. And that leaves you with extra slots to play around with. The final absolutely mandatory for Cagliostro is her Awakening Sigil. This gives her both of her unique buffs that you would normally find on sigil on single sigils through Sierra. It's very important for her because this allows her to have a permanent uptime on 30% defense down as long as you land a fully charged collapse, which is her charge attack. This is very easy. It's very synergistic with her kit. You are doing full charge collapse pretty much after every combo or skill. So this is very simple to proc and very strong as a result. This also lets you bypass needing a ton of attack boosting stats. It also allows your teammates to bypass needing a ton of attack boosting stats as reducing defense makes it easier to reach the damage caps and it just helps out a bit lower geared players or if you're fighting bosses with high defense or something in like progression like when Fa slash Vasilius comes out. It'll be very good to have debuffs like this that are permanently up. The next part of her awakening is Founder's Truth. This one is pretty simple. Whenever she lands a combo finisher, it reduces her skill cooldowns by 3%. It is very similar to Cascade, but it only works for her finishers. This is very strong. It pretty much helps with her low cooldown playstyle. And yeah. 
If you prefer to have more defensive utility, feel free to add that in. If you want to go crit build, you can do that. If you want more HP, like this. But of course, make sure you're under 45,000 to hit Catastrophe. If you want maybe right under the 45k HP line and some Potion Hoarder, but this is obviously a level 11 Aegis, so you're only going to have a level 11 Potion Hoarder. You can run Garrison, you can run Stronghold. Steel Nerves is very strong for her due to running Steady on her Quick Charge or wherever you might have Steady Focus. Steady Focus plus Steel Nerves is the Stout Heart plus Steel Nerves combo, which is very strong because Steel Nerves gives you a 15% damage reduction while Stout Heart is active. Of course, if this was Max, it would be 15%. And she is charging a lot. So this is very strong for that purpose. You can also purposefully eat mechanics if you start to charge and you have Stout Heart up due to that and then have Steel Nerves to help you take even more reduced damage. Outside of that, there are things Improved Dodge, Nimble Onslaught, Nimble Resilience, Uplift, literally Guts, Auto Revive, anything you really want that helps you just play comfortably. Now for me personally, this is what I go with on my Cagliostro. You can choose what you want, but this is my preference. I have Guts on her Imbuement, on her right stone, and Injury to Insult is a very good, like, simple slot in. Yes, it's only 11% extra damage dealt, However, due to Cagliostro always having a debuff on the enemy, as long as you're landing your fully charged collapses, she is constantly getting that extra damage. So going back through editing, I did forget one thing about my substats on my sigils. So personally, I like utility skills like Guts, Auto Revive, if you can get those on substats, that's great. Potion Hoarder is even better. I personally love Potion Hoarder. If I can take Potion Hoarder, I will. I also tend to replace a supplemental damage for a link together that has that. Very strong combination like this. Potion Hoarder, very, very good, especially if you want to help support the team a bit more or if you just feel like you need the extra heals or revives. Very strong perfectly okay to just drop sup for whatever comfortability you desire. But the big things that I forgot to mention was I have max quick cooldown and a level 16 cascade. These are very strong as Kang has pretty short cooldowns, but we make them even shorter through the use of these two so that she is pretty much machine gunning out skills very often. And I personally just prefer that course if you don't like this you can do whatever you want with your substats these are the stats i've gotten i've gotten very lucky to get the ones i have these are the ones i like and it just fits my playstyle very well if you have a different playstyle or something you like otherwise of course replace as you see fit so her skills for me this is my personal preferred playstyle her most important skill is Phantasmagoria. This is a very unique buff to Cagliostro that others do not have, as unlike other generic attack and defense buffs, like say from Rosetta from her natural passive roses, or say Captain's Rage, this stacks with these generic attack and defense buffs. So, for instance, if I were to have Rosetta in my party, as I do, swap this over. So, say I have a buffer in my party, like Rosetta. My N1s tend to do about 25-ish thousand, 24 to 26, so average about 25. They do about 30,000-ish, average 31k on hit with Rosetta buff. If I pop Cagliostro's buff, I am now doing 38,000, 39,000. 
uh, Rosetta's buff fell off, so I'm now back to doing 33,000. If she puts it back up before the timer runs out, then I will go back up to about 40,000. There's the attack buff. 39, 44, 38, 44. So it is a unique attack buff that stacks with generic buffs like Rosetta's. This is something that other characters cannot do. It also provides defense and about 30% crit rate up. So this in itself makes her very useful if you ever want to be stacking buffs for whatever reason. This is her strongest ability that you pretty much always want to have. Alexandria is one of her fast cooldown skills alongside Mimic Doll. These allow Collapse to charge faster right after using it, much like Mimic Doll does. This launches opponents. Of course, I don't have reactive on, so you can't see it, but it lets Collapse charge quickly. Mimic Doll lets you reposition easily, also lets you charge, and then the statue will blow up for damage. Very good skills, short cooldowns, very synergistic with her kit. Pain Train, this one does not let you charge collapse quickly. However, it is a very strong gap closer and it has a long cool or it has a very short cooldown. So much like Kag in general, short cooldowns, very good for spamming. Her other skills. Mehen. This is okay. However, it is very hard to generally make use of it as you need these traps to fully materialize. This is good for certain fights like Proto Bahamut where you can pre-place them so they stabilize. But the attack down proponent of it isn't too strong simply because of the caveat of needing them to stabilize entirely. So I personally don't run this. However, you do get three stacks of it. So if you just want to spam them out on the field, they are not terrible, but I personally do not take them. Reinforce, much like a bunch of other healing abilities, it is simply a massive circle that you can heal all your allies with. This, you know, goes hand in hand with her supportiveness. If you are progging a hard fight, you're under geared, you feel like you need the heal, then obviously you can take this. She is one of the few characters who also has a Dispel with Disruption. It takes a while to cast and the Dispel doesn't go off immediately until the hit actually procs. So once the two orbs come together, then the explosion happens and the Dispel happens too. There is only a very small handful of fights that have Dispellable buffs currently. Or if they do have buffs that can be Dispellable, they also are easy to manage and deal with in some way, shape, or form. Similar to Proto Baja, if you fail in Arcadia, it gets a buff, but if you ever succeed in Arcadia, it loses the buff, so... In the current state of the game, Dispel is not too required. It might be later, with like the release of Thaw slash Lucilius. We'll have to see. And then Kag's big support skill, if for whatever reason your whole team went down, you can simply revive them. Instantly. It's Pretty strong if you ever need this. Just adds to her supportive utility. So as you can see, five out of her eight skills are more supportive-ish, while only three of them are more centered on damage, with only two of them allowing her to quickly charge collapse afterwards. So for me personally, this is what I run. This is what I would suggest running for anything you have on farm. If you ever need to replace a skill for any other type of utility, I would recommend replacing Pain Train as it is only a gap closer. And you can afford to get rid of that for anything else if you somehow need it. If we go into Masteries, just pretty quickly, we have some standard stuff like Adrenaline Rush, Launch. These things are pretty standard across characters as a whole. Then you have her Link Time Enhanced Ability. This charges her collapse faster. It essentially acts as if you just did a finisher so you can just charge collapse over and over. For the most part, you'll probably want to do skill collapse, skill collapse, skill collapse, just because it is, you know, more efficient in terms of using your cooldowns. Still very strong. Her link attack bonus skill, it's 
okay, I mean, it's a 10% chance to activate summoning her statue when you do a link attack that counts also as a finisher. It's just a little bit of extra damage from what I found. So yeah, she doesn't get anything too amazing from her masteries. However, you know, it's good to know and be aware of what the character does and why they do the things they do. For overmastery, I personally value normal cap up a lot on pretty much every character because no matter what, every character in this game is going to be spending a lot of time normal attacking. I think it is a very valuable cap up to have, ideally. You try to get it to max for Cagliostra's case because she does a lot of skills especially in link time and just especially if you have like quick cooldown cascade and so on skill cap very strong heal cap not ideal it's just there because it's what i rolled it can help if you're playing with her heal buff so you know it's a little helpful but me personally i don't care for it her skybound art cap up also pretty good. More Skybound art damage is never a bad thing, so yeah, it's pretty much what you want. You can also try to get attack up, HP up, just base stats are like never a bad thing, but if you have HP up, you do need to watch out to see if you are over hitting the 45,000 mark for Catastrophe. Crit rate up, also good if you wanted to go into a crit build. Skill damage, raw is fine but not really needed as you'll pretty much be hitting caps. You can get chain burst cap up, not really needed. Chain burst pretty standardly hit for max damage currently, so it's not really too much of a worry to try to hit. Stun power I don't find to be very useful personally. Maybe you like stun power, of course you can go for that if you want. At the end of the day this is all RNG. I spend a lot of mastery rolling these to try to get some good stats, so Devote your mastery points to overmastery where you can, when you can, and on the characters you want to anyways. But these are just ones I prefer that I got super lucky on. So as a simple rotation, Kag is pretty freeform. You tend to use the normal one to finish your strings and then follow up with the full charge collapse. The string you do just depends on the scenario you're in and which you need to be using at the time. Otherwise, pop or buff when you feel you need it, usually at the start of phases, start of burst phases, whenever it's really required. Make sure you use your skills off of cooldown because they are very short. And then after the ones that do allow you to do a full charge collapse, which is Alexandria and Mimic Doll, obviously do the collapse. So realistically, it'd be something like an opener, it'd be buff, skill, full charge collapse, skill, Full charge collapse. Pain train. You can't collapse. You do link attack into collapse. Now you don't have um, go cooldowns, so you just go into whatever, right? So you want N3. Skill off cooldown. You see your cooldowns are coming up soon. Just finish with a good skill. Or finish with a good uh, string. Skill. Collapse. Skill. Link. You know. She's very spammy, right? If you know your cooldowns are coming up like shortly, you can always use a shorter combo. So like now they're all coming back up, so pop them. But yeah, she's very free form in terms of rotation. Very hard to mess up as long as you are charging collapse after finishers and charging collapse after her skills and using her skills as they come up off cooldown, she is pretty much freeform. If you want something specifically for link time, this is what I do. Say you are in link time, you're about, you're about to hit link time. Now in link time, charge collapse. Pain train, mimic, collapse, Alexandria, collapse, pain train, mimic. You just kind of want to use the skills as they come up off of cooldown into charged collapses. 
And then if you know you're not going to have a cooldown up that is in Alexandria Mimicdoll, then just pop Pain Train, right? So, bam, full charge, wham, full charge, train, mimic, full charge. Pretty straightforward, very spammy. Anyways, here's a Baja run I was doing. So, Kag is pretty good at just doing the cannons because you generally have some character who wants to be building up stacks or buffs on the crystals and on the various adds. So, I pretty much really take care of the cannon stuff. Not really much of a problem. So cannon parts are over, it's time for the first Arcadia, whatever it may be, just standard VP on it. I should have started with my cooldowns, but I was honestly thinking I was playing a different character, because I have been playing a lot and swapping around. So Baja comes down, we have Phantasmagoria, I enter a pain train, skill, collapse, skill, collapse, doing auto strings, pop the link. And then it's basically just before all the strings into charge collapsed. Skill, charge collapse, pain train, and then he phases. As you can see, it's a it's pretty free form. Just make sure you're always hitting the links with your team. Always fully charge your collapses. Use your cooldowns when they come up. Hit them with a little sticker. You can pre-charge here, because he's coming back, and you can let it release. You get the defense up immediately, pop Phantasmagoria. I did N2 because I just wanted the damage due to the Regan Wave uh, win box. You want to cancel your combo. The rest of it is pretty much what I've already explained. Always try to be on cannon on anyone, really, if no one else is doing it. Next Arcadia. Very simple. Again, I should have started with skills. This is my fault. Doesn't matter too much. Everyone kind of just knows what to do in Baja at this point. Same thing here. We have Phantasmagoria because of the other Kai. Spend skills on cooldown, link attacks, make sure you get your fully charged collapses. It's a break. Get my collapse after your autos. Skill, collapse, pain train, back into autos. Finisher, collapse, mimic doll, collapse. Going to Ogi here as soon as he starts to get up. I jumped on accident, so. There's the Ogi. Do this to extend DPS uptime. If you're going for truly optimal, 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 you ideally want to hit the Ogi, let the chain run out, someone else do an Ogi, let the chain run out, rinse and repeat. You can do full burst. If your party is good enough, you can just kill Baja here. I do that all the time. Especially with, uh, you know, people who I know are good at the game. But the other two didn't do the chain, so this is still pretty good, because they're going to do a chain here. Extends the uptime, and it's really just about spending everything as it comes up. So 
So this is especially good because we're going to get link time right here. Again, spam skills, collapse, skill, collapse, skill, skill, collapse. Right. And the longer the link time lasts because you have actual players, the more you get to spam skill into collapse. You could have killed if we had a bit more DPS if I didn't have a little suboptimal rotations here and there, but it's still fine. He's gonna die. We just have to sit through the mandatory cutscenes and mechanics. Hit him with the flex supernova. Honestly, I just forgot. <laughs> I was brain off at this point. Charge collapse. Let it loose. Miss the dodge. There goes the hit list run. Give him the cag tax. And then it's basically just dead. Your Tasmagoria. Use your skills. Yada yada. Oh bye. Most groups don't even make it to this point anymore. Baja just kind of dies before he gets to do all of this. But you know, it's a pug. I just did one run just to get this recorded. So. He's done. Spoiler alert. I just finished all of my Terminus weapons today on stream. So. I have no reason to be doing this other than I just enjoy it. But yeah, personally, I think I played a bit poorly in this run. Still hit 16 and a half mil honors. It's pretty good. Overall, clean run. Didn't take very long. So yeah, as a whole, Kylie's throw is very strong, easy to play, versatile support and damage dealer. She is kind of a jack of all trades. She can kind of do a little bit of everything, but she's a very fun character. She has her buff, which is absolutely unique, which no one else has. And yeah. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. Let me know if you think I should do any other guides or if there's anything I missed or should try to cover more with other guides. Just have any general questions about Kai, just feel free to ask them below. And yeah, thank you for watching. Feel free to follow me on Twitch. I stream generally about five out of seven days of the week. I've been playing a lot of Granblue. I do play other things, not just Relink, so I don't expect me to be an only Relink streamer, but yeah. Have a good night, or day, or morning. <laughs>